give you all the praise and all the honor and all the worship that belongs to you. For you were the one that paid the price, that shed your blood on the cross and purchased us. Hallelujah, you paid the price in full and then you cried out on the cross, it is finished, it is finished. And therefore we are now able to worship you because you paved the way and you opened the door for us unto the Father into heavenly, into his heavenly throne room. And like, thank you, Father, that we can stand before you this morning as if we have never sinned, as if we were never gone astray. Lord, thank you that we are now before you in the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Not in our own righteousness, because in our own righteousness we are, we have failed. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor and the worship for there is none like you. You are worthy. You are worthy, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory unto Jesus, Son of the living God. Son of the living God. Right where you are, open up your spirit. Jesus wants to touch you. He's in your presence right now. Hallelujah. Time and distance is not restricted, restricted to time and distance. And from this room that we are, we, we, we are worshiping, you can experience His tangible presence right where you are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the presence of God, the Bible says there is liberty. In the presence of God, there's freedom, there's the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. And that's the, the reason why we worship Him. Because He says He lives under the praises. He dwells under the praises of His people. And when we praise Him, He draws the presence of God. And that's what we need to be changed. That's what we need to, 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 to uh, 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 counter all the uh, 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 trials and tribulations that we face each day. Hallelujah. Because in His presence, everything changes. And where you are, you can have that experience. That whatever is troubling you, God can now, at this very moment, change your circumstance for the better forever. Hallelujah. So I encourage you to receive right now from the, His presence your breakthrough your healing are you sick in your body you can receive healing right now we minister it unto you now in Jesus name and whatever your condition we tell that condition in the name of Jesus to depart from your body the spirit of infirmity we tell it depart from that body in the name of Jesus Christ. We bind you and tell you to go. And we minister now in the name of Jesus, healing unto that one that needs healing right now in Jesus' name. Rebro Sitrimende. Hallelujah. All you have to do is you receive. You can't do anything to deserve it. Nothing. Only your faith in God can make the difference. And the fact that you open up your heart and receive from him your miracle this day. Are you in lack? Is there, is there a financial problem that you need to address right now? Well, we come to you in the name of Jesus. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. Whatever you need, he shall provide. Look unto him. And he will make a way where there seems to be no, no way. Don't you have a job? Well, he can, he can create a job for you. Believe. And set your heart upon him in faith. Hallelujah. He makes ways where there seem to be no way. That's the God that we know, that, that, that we serve. He's the creator of everything heaven and the earth hallelujah receive now in Jesus name in the mighty name of Jesus hallelujah hallelujah 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus, we love you. We appreciate you this morning. Hallelujah for your presence. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory unto God. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to continue to minister the word of God this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jamie. If you want, you can just keep on playing or you can put on that other uh, 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 music that you have available. Hallelujah. The title of my message this morning might be, might sound strange. Um, and I've called it Sin and Salvation. With a question, why? Sin, salvation, why? I'm, going to, I'm just going to speak from my heart this morning about this subject. Why do we need salvation? What is sin? And why, why did Jesus have to come? This is a gospel message this morning. And uh, I uh, suggest that you, that you listen carefully. For a long time in my life, I have served God with my whole heart. But since the beginning of the day that I gave my heart to Jesus, I knew, I just knew this one thing. I was a sinner and I needed salvation. I didn't understand all of it and why it happened. Although I knew that about Adam and Eve, that they have sinned in the garden and they uh, were disobedient. They ate of a tree that they were not supposed to eat. Right in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And then the Bible says in verse 2 of Genesis 1, And the earth was empty and void. And then God spoke and said, light, and light was. And then he created the, the in, in, in six days, or uh, he created the whole earth and everything on it, and the heavens. And he, he, he made the, 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 the waters depart from the, uh, uh, from the land. And... Um, I'm sure we all know about that. But on the sixth day, God said something. Let us, let us make man in our own image. The original language speaks about Elohim when it speaks of God. Elohim. And Elohim is a, a, a word that is plural. It can also be singular. That's why God was able to, the Bible would say in, and Elohim said, let us make man in, according to our own image, our own stature. And then God made man. With other words, uh, why, I'm, why am I mentioning Elohim and the plurality of that? Because God said, let us make man. So since the beginning, God was a trinity. He is the Father. He is the Holy Spirit. And He is the Son. John, the first chapter says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And we have learned, if we uh, know the Gospels, we, we would know that the Word is Jesus Christ. And He became incarnated when He was born into this world. Hallelujah. Let us make man according to our own image, and uh, uh, then... God formed 
uh, from the soil of the ground. He, he formed Adam and he breathed into Adam and the Bible says he became a living soul. Then God, I cannot go to the whole uh, uh, history of everything that happened to the, into the whole detail, but then God made Eve out of the, uh, the rib from Adam. And he formed out of that rib, he formed a woman. But God gave Adam a command and he said, uh, 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 subdue and replenish the earth. God said to himself, when he said, let us make man, let us make man so that the man can rule over the earth. God gave Adam rulership and dominion over the earth. One can say it this way, when God made Adam, Now my mind just lifts with what I wanted to say. Let us make man in our own image and let them subdue and replenish the earth. And what I was going to say is that you, you could say God said uh, to Adam and what he made Adam was the God of this earth. Because he was to rule. God made Adam a ruler and he gave Eve for, to him as a helper and together they would have uh, 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 dominion and replenish the earth rulership but then God gave the Adam a commandment because the Bible says that God planted a garden and called it Eden and in the garden, he, 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 he uh, said to Adam and Eve, or, or he said to Adam, rather, you may eat of every fruit in this garden, of every tree, except for the one in the middle, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You're not uh, 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 allowed to eat of that, because once you eat of that tree, you will surely die. And the word death or die in, in, in that context would mean that the moment that you would eat of this tree, you would surely be separated from God. And we all know the story that Adam and Eve sinned and they ate of, the, of, of that tree because they were deceived by the devil. This is a very important message this morning. Because if you understand the gospel uh, in this manner, you won't have a problem to understand why should I... Uh, uh, live according to the Bible why should I live for God when Adam and Eve sinned they rebelled against God and we read in the New Testament that, that rebellion is a sin of witchcraft a sin of witchcraft that means whenever you are in rebellion to God you are busy with witchcraft in other words, there's idolatry presence in your, present in your life. And God can never be one with sin. He's, he's a righteous God. He's a holy God. He can never sin. But the moment that Adam and Eve sinned, they, they lost their glory because they were clothed in the glory of His presence. And all of a sudden, they realized they were naked. And the glory of the Lord departed from them because of their disobedience. Somewhere in the Bible, God says, Obedience to me 
is better than sacrifice. God looks unto the heart of a man. And that's what he will judge. Your heart. They sinned. And the glory of God departed from them. But God made a promise. Because he's, he loved mankind. It was the first being that God created according to his own image. Can I tell you this? The Bible never says that there is any angel in heaven uh, 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 created according to his image. You see, for the first time, God made cre a, a creation to have a relationship like a family relationship. And that's what God desired when he, when he made man. A relationship. But he gave Adam and Eve a free will. Otherwise, it could have just been like a robot today. And it can be programmed and you can control it all the time. But God wants to be loved by us. He gave us a free will. And so we have a choice. And Adam and Eve had a choice to obey God. But they were deceived. Because the devil came, the, uh, the Satan in the form of a snake came to him, to, to her and said, Did God say? That if you eat of this tree. And she said, Yes, he said, This tree, if you eat of this tree, we will surely die. And he said to her, But no, that's not true. Uh, God only just, he doesn't want you to be like him. The fact was, they already looked like him. They were already like God. So they were deceived because of their innocence. God had a salvation plan in place. And he said, I will send a savior. I will send a savior, a, a Mashiach, in the future. And he, will, and he will purchase your salvation. He will come and deliver you from eternal death. And he said, make this promise. He said, the seed of the serpent and your seed will ever, forever be in enmity. They will forever be enemies. And the serpent will come and bite the heel of, of your seed. But your seed will crush his head. Lembro sit in the saladai. So God made a promise. And we know the story of Noah. And there happened a lot of things on the earth because God at one stage uh, uh, said that he was sorry that he made man. And then he had to deal with what happened. And that's got to do with, with the giants and the Nephilims. And that's another story for another day. And then... Uh, Noah survived and eventually uh, God uh, from his descendants God called Abraham and he made a promise to Abraham and he said that from your seed uh, in your uh, uh, from your descendants I will bring forth salvation I will bring forth the, 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 the uh, uh, savior of the world And when Satan heard that, he put a stop. He resisted a descendant for Abraham. And as our nature as man, uh, men are as uh, humankind is that we will always make a plan. And that's what eventually happened because the promises of God were, were, were sure, but it, it took so long. And we know the story of Ishmael and how he was born. And 
eventually God said, no, that is not the heir. That is not the, the, the bloodline through which I will provide the Savior. From your own loins and from Sarah's womb, I will bring forth the Savior. Hallelujah. And eventually, as we know that Isaac was born and then uh, uh, we have the history of the Jews and the law that came into place. Because before Moses, there was no law. But Abraham had a special relationship with God and that's why he was called, as I preached last Sunday, about living in his presence. God, uh, Abraham pleased God through his faith and that's why he was called the father of faith. And eventually, Messiah came. But he came different than they expected. He came in such a way that, that they could not understand because they expected a deliverer. They expected a king. And he was a king. But they did not recognize him as king. Because his kingdom is not of this world. Hallelujah. I've just explained why sin. What is sin? Sin is rebellion against God. What is, what is rebellion? It's all intent against the original uh, plan of God. Everything that comes against the original uh, uh, purposes of God. And if we look at that it, that way, that is why one can never say if you are born and you feel gay or you feel like you, you are born like a woman and now you've, uh, you are born a woman and now all of a sudden you feel you're a man. That is rebellion against the purposes of God. And vice versa, if you, you are born a man and all of a sudden you, you feel so feminine. That's not the purposes what God had intended for you. That is perversion. That you tell me, my brother and my sister, and the hearer of this word. Don't be deceived. God is not mocked. When God made you, He knew exactly what He made you. Hallelujah. Sin is coming against the purposes and the original intent of God. That is what sin is. Someone once said, what is sin? It is missing the goal. So, with other words, I can say it in this way that if you miss your calling, you will be held accountable. Because it is a sin if you miss your, the, the purpose and the intent that God made you. A brother, Miles Mandro, said it many times. He said, they are, uh, the, the, the graveyards are the richest soil on earth. The most rich, it's, a, it's the richest places on earth is the graveyard. Why? Because the potential of the people that's in the in the in the ground, they have not they, they died with their potential. Don't misunderstand me now that I'm not saying that if you don't fulfill your calling, that you can't be saved. That's not what I'm saying. But you will be held accountable to that. Because once we are saved, we will stand before God in the bema uh, uh, judgment before his throne and we will give account to the works that we have done in his name and all the works of our lives and it will be tested and then we will receive rewards and that's what you will miss if you miss your calling is your reward that's why Jesus said they, let no one take away your crown from you in other words let no one uh, distract you from your original intent from, from the heart of God. The purposes that He has made you for. Don't be distracted. 
There are so many dis distractions in life. Our own carnality, our own flesh, our own, our, our own fleshly and carnal nature can distract us from the original intent of our lives that God has planned for us. And God says in His Word, I know the plans that I have for you. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and the future. But if we miss the goal, don't miss the goal. Hallelujah. That's why we need salvation. Because when God gave the law to Moses, the, and he said, we must live by the law. He actually just gave it as a standard of living. And at the, in the end, they, no one could keep the law perfectly because sac blood sacrifice had to, to be made all the time. When Jesus, or, or, or when Adam and Eve sinned, God took the blood, the skin of an, an animal that God himself slaughtered, and he put it over them to cover them. Why? Because God must always judge sin. He must always. He's a righteous God. He's holy, He's pure, He's perfect. Sin cannot come in His presence. But His love and His grace is so, so great that He made a plan of salvation for man. And then He covered them with blood. What kind of blood? Innocent blood. Because the, 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 the sin runs in the blood. Of Adam, and that's why the Bible says, All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All have sinned. There's not one man that can say, I have no sin. The only one that could say that was, was Jesus Christ, because he was not born of an earthly father, he was not conceived of an earthly father. And the blood of the, of, of the, of the fathers run to, th through to the children. And the sin is in the blood. And that's why when uh, every descendant of Adam has been born into sin. Yes, I know that there's a time of innocence. When a baby is born. But all... Man, this every every human being at one stage in his life he become conscious of sin. Once you sin, you will be aware of it. Because your own conscience will condemn you. But God had a plan of salvation. In the beginning he took the skin of the of the animal and it covered and it and it withheld his wrath and his judgment on Adam and Eve and even even through the bloodline into the uh, Jewish uh, 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 this uh, or, or, or people of God in the temple they had to make a uh, uh, sacrifice daily if you have sinned this, or if you have this kind of sickness, you have to go and slaughter an animal. And if you are, have any kind of sin and, uh, uh, that uh, you are aware of or something, then you would go to the temple and you would make sacrifice. And once a year, every year, the high priest could go into the presence of God through a, a sacrifice of a perfect lamb. That was to speak of the, of the lamb of God that would come. But it could only cover. 
could not take away. It could only cover, and once you sin again, a new sacrifice had to be made. New innocent blood had to cover that, that sin, that unrighteousness. And when Jesus hung on the cross, he became the perfect Lamb of God because He was conceived of the Holy Spirit. Why is Jesus' blood innocent? Because the Bible says He Himself never sinned and knew no sin. He was born without sin. Why is that? Because His bloodline did not come from an earthly father. And he was, His blood was pure and holy. And He never sinned. And knew no sin. And the day when John the Baptist was, was busy baptizing, Jesus came to the river Jordan. And the Holy Spirit spoke to John and said, The one that you see uh, my spirit uh, sit upon. That is the one. You can point him out. And when Jesus arrived, when John looked up, this, the Holy Spirit came and sat upon Jesus. And, uh, 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 you know, he said, uh, and remains. If he sits sit upon, the one he sits upon and remains, that is the one. And when John looked up and he saw the Holy Spirit come to sit on, upon Jesus, and, and he looked up and he, he saw, but that Spirit, the Holy Spirit remains on him. He could call out, Behold the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Behold the Lamb of God. The Lamb that would be slain. It was the lamb that Abraham prophesied about when, when him and Isaac went up the mountain for Isaac to be slaughtered by Abraham. And Isaac would ask, Father, we, I, we have the sacrifice, we have the wood, we have the fire. Where's the sacrifice? Where's the animal? And God said, uh, Abraham said, God will supply his own land. And he did. And that's why Jesus came. He had to come and hung on the cross. And when he went into Gethsemane, and he prayed, Father, not my will, but your will be done. And his blood, uh, uh, sweat came, became as blood. He called out, Father, let your will be done, not mine. But if, 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 if at all possible, let this cup pass me by. And at that moment, all of humankind's sin. And I want you to think of this for a moment. What Jesus must have gone through. And how deserted he must have felt. Because the whole sin, all the sin of the whole world that was ever done on the earth. And was to come from that day until the end would be upon him. When he hung on the cross, he called out, My God, my God, why had you forsaken me? Why did you forsake me? Because he took all of your sin upon him, all of my sin. When he hung on the cross, all of our sin was upon him. He was the sacrifice. Our sin transferred to him. All who would in the past were expecting him and all who would accept him uh, after his crucifixion and uh, 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 resurrection. All of us Our sins were nailed upon him, or, or came upon him, and it, would nail, it, it was nailed upon the cross. He paid the perfect price. The Bible says that he, he had bled himself empty. 
when the Roman soldier pushed the spear into his side, blood and water flowed. And he paid the price in full for you and for me, for our salvation. And you know what? His blood is perfect. His blood is pure. And that's why no demon can come and stand against the blood of Jesus. Because he can't go to death. When he died, when he cried out, it is finished. And he blew out his last breath. He went, the Bible says, he went down into Sheol, into, in, into the hell chambers of hell and he took away the keys of death from the devil and he rose from the dead on the third day hallelujah and 40 days later he ascended, he ascended to heaven and he said unto his disciples look I'm going to my father to prepare you a place For in my, father's man, uh, in my father's house is many mansions. And I'm going to prepare your place. Go ye out and preach the gospel unto the whole world. Go and make disciples and teach them. This purpose of this message today is to tell you about sin and what it does. Uh, but also about salvation, salvation. And that's why we need to know these truths. You cannot just decide, yes, I want Jesus, but you just want Him for the benefits. Many come to Christ because they hear of all the blessing and all of the uh, uh, benefits of becoming a, a, a child of God. And that is sure and it is true. But our motives must be right. Why do we serve God? I remember one night in 1981, December, when, when uh, my uncle asked me if I would also would like to be baptized the next day, which would be a Sunday. And it was a Saturday evening when he, asked, when he asked me this question. And I thought for a moment, yes, I want to serve God. I want to serve the Lord. That was a decision that I made. And it was a, a sure decision until this day. I want to serve Him. Not just for the benefits. Because I want to love Him. I love Him. I love Him. Why? Because I come to realize that He loves me. And that's why He was willing to die on the cross for my uh, uh, sins. So that I can be saved. On the cross, He paid the perfect price. In other words, the blood that He shed on the cross were able not to just cover my sin but to wash it away forever for eternity and later on they would ask Peter or Paul I can't remember now exactly that scripture but they asked how can we be saved the soldier asked him and they said believe in your heart the Lord Jesus Christ and if you believe confess with your mouth then you will be saved you and your whole family How do we need to be saved? What is, sa what is salvation? Because the day that we, uh, uh, we were born, we were already separated from God. Because uh, we are a, a, a spirit. We have a soul, which is our mind and our will and our emotions. And we live in a body. But our, our spirit is the being that was separated from God. Because our spirit was the image of God. But the light that was in our spirit went out the day when Adam and Eve sinned. They became dark and separated from God. And that is why we need Jesus to, for our spirit to be reignited, reconnected to God. That's why Jesus said, I am the only way to the Father, there's no other door that you can go through. I am the door. I am the way. I am the life. 
That's why when you receive Jesus Christ and you make that decision, it, it must be not a likely decision that you take. Because when you decide, yes, I want to serve Him, let it be a sure decision, a quality decision. That you will serve Him for the rest of your life. And that you will, you will teach your family and, you, and tell your family and your friends about Him. You know, when, when they become a, a, a born, again, uh, born again believer, we are to be His witnesses. To go and preach the gospel, the good news. The same gospel that I'm preaching today. The good news of, of, uh, of Jesus Christ uh, uh, as Him, as our Savior. Savior. We are to go and preach it to the world. Wherever we go, into our workplace, into the marketplace, wherever you find yourself, we must be witnesses unto Him. You see, many people are in church, and it's, it's not the same person in church than when you go to home or when you go out to a party. We must always remain the same. He's witnesses. Hallelujah. Wherever we go, our light must shine to the world. Our light must shine. Why? Because there's an a, a, a uncountable amount of people going to eternal damnation. The penalty of sin is death. What is death? Jesus spoke about the second death. That means to be separated from God forever. It's one thing to die in your body. It's another thing if you die spiritually. If you die in your body and you are not alive spiritually, you are forever damned into the eternal fire. And that is the truth of the gospel. Many a times Jesus himself mentioned about hell fire we cannot play with his grace I know his grace to reach out to the farthest ends of the world and where sin abounds his grace much more abound I know and understand that but we cannot abuse his grace the Bible says his mercies are new every morning hallelujah and every morning we can pick up his mercy is like the manna that the Jews picked up in the desert. Because we are in this world. Although we are not from this world, once you are born again. And we will experience calamities and trials and tribulations. We will, we will have that experiences. But each morning we can pick up fresh manna. Spend time in His presence. Spend time in His Word. Spend time in prayer. So, sin, salvation. Why? We need salvation. We need Jesus and His blood sacrifice. When he ascended up to heaven, he, he, he gave his disciples another promise. He said, I'm going to my Father to prepare for you a place. But I will not leave you alone. I will send you the Holy Spirit, another comforter that will comfort you. And he will lead you into all truth. And you shall know the truth. And the knowledge of the truth that you know will set you free. After this message today, you cannot say that I didn't hear and I didn't know. So my question to you would be this day. Are you saved? Are you a sinner? Do you realize now if you are not saved that why you are called a sinner? Do you need salvation? Are you ready to receive salvation? Jesus paved the way for you to be saved. Dear one that listens to me now, He paved.
paid the price for your salvation. And if you are there and you're not saved and hear this message, this is your day of salvation. Which day is the best day to be saved? Today. You don't know if you will see tomorrow. I don't know if I will see tomorrow on this earth. That's why today is the best day of salvation for you. So if you have not received Him as your Lord and your Savior, this is your day and this is your opportunity to invite Him into your heart and say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. I'm in rebellion with you because I'm not following your, your word and I'm not, I'm not, I don't have you, uh, uh, you as, my, as, my, as my perfect sacrifice. I've not accepted you uh, because that's what's going to be needed. You have to accept Jesus into your heart. If you don't accept him in your heart, he cannot come in. That means that the, you, you keep the door closed. You cannot say, oh, but I believe in him. The Bible says, yeah, the devils also believe. And they shiver. They're not saved. They believe. They know him. So you have to make a heart's decision. Because of his great love that reached out to you this day to say, Lord Jesus, I realize I'm a sinner. Come into my life. Save my soul. Wash me in your blood and cleanse me and help me to walk on your path of righteousness as from this day. And if you've done that today, and if you've prayed that prayer, and you made that quality decision. I can say this with surety. You are saved. Because if you've made that decision, something would come upon you. Like a peace. Or like some kind of experience with, uh, that surpasses your, your understanding. Because God is real. He's a person. He's experienceable. If there's such a word, but you would know what I mean. You can be, you can be experienced through His Holy Spirit, but you have to invite Him in. My suggestion would be, after such a decision, that you would find a church, a good gospel, a good word-based church that preached the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And go and serve the Lord and be a, a servant unto those whom you now start to follow. Follow those who follow Christ until you become a, 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 in such a spiritual state that you are now can become also a leader that can lead the others. Let your mind be renewed by the word of God. Let someone now come and baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And there's a promise with that. And that's what happened in the upper room. When Jesus ascended, He said to His disciples, go and wait in Jerusalem until the Holy Spirit had come upon you. And they went to Jerusalem and for 10 days, and the Bible says, and when they were in one accord, all of a sudden, a mighty rushing wind came into that room. And tongues of fire went and sat upon them all. And they all began to speak. They spoke in other tongues. And they manifested in different ways. Because the, the people outside at 9 o'clock in the morning said, But these people are drunk. But Peter stood up and he said, They are not drunk as you suppose. Because this is what the prophet Joel had spoken about. That I would pour out, my, in the last days I would pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And this is what's happening now. That is, this is God's Spirit that is poured out. And my brother, my sister, this is what we're going to see in the near future. We're going to see the move of God in a, in a mighty way like we've never seen it. It will even uh, uh, surpass the, 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 born, the, the birth of the church. The Holy Spirit is coming with a new move. And you, if you now give your heart to Him, you can be part of that. Hallelujah. And you go out and you preach the same gospel. 
and lead those to Christ that does not know Him, that does not know the truth. Hallelujah. My brother and my sister, you've received Him. We are called brothers and sisters in the Lord. You are now no longer a citizen on this earth. You are now a heaven's citizen. Another kingdom. New rules apply. Jesus said in John 15, if, if, I, if you abide in me and I abide in you, in other words, if you stay, if, if, you, if you follow me, and you, and you treasure my words in your heart. That word, because He is the Word of God, if we treasure Him in our heart, that means that we become like Him. And we, the works that He had done, we will also do. And Jesus said, even greater works than that. That's what we're supposed to do. When John the Baptist was locked up, he called one of his disciples. He said, go and ask Jesus if he is the one. Because he now all of a sudden, he was not sure anymore. Because John maybe expected a different deliverer like Moses. But he, he was confused. And he asked, go and ask him, are you the one? Or should we expect another? And when they came to Jesus, Jesus told them, go and tell John what you see. Tell John that the lame walk. Tell him that the blind see. Tell him that the dead are raised. And the sick are healed. And those in bondage are delivered. And if these things happen, we will know that the kingdom of God has come close to us. And this is what we're going to experience. The works of God. Hallelujah. And you have received Jesus now as your Lord and Savior. Serve Him with your whole heart. Serve Him forever. Don't let anything distract you. Even if a leader that you look upon, and, you, and it might be someone that you almost uh, 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 idolize. Be careful of that because man can, 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 uh, can disappoint you. Man can disappoint you uh, uh, many times. I can even disappoint you. Why? Because I'm a man. Don't be distracted by, by, by spiritual leaders that are not maybe living like you think they ought to live. Don't be distracted by that. You take responsibility for your own life. And serve Him wholeheartedly. And strive to perfection. Strive for perfection. Paul says, I, I, I run after it. Like I can grab it. Hallelujah. If you've given your heart to Jesus now, you are saved. And I welcome you into the kingdom of God. As a servant of God. Go and testify. Go and tell the world what has happened to you. I should warn you. If you want to live a godly life, you will have and experience persecution. Don't let it distract you. Because the reward would be more than worth it all. Serve Him with your whole heart. Jamie, I'm going to ask you to let us conclude this service now with a song. La
the Holy Spirit and you could have the evidence of that through speaking in other tongues I would encourage you to get someone that's that's a, a, a spiritual leader to go and baptize you Why? Now you know. Now you know. If you understand this, you can now walk a righteous path for the Lord. Strive for holiness. Strive to accomplish His goals and His purposes for you in life. Let us sing. upon each one hearing and looking at this message and with the sound of my voice Lord let them be blessed let your peace that surpasses all understanding be upon them all may your face shine upon them, us all Lord hallelujah and may your glory be upon us is our prayer today in the mighty name of Jesus. Peace be unto you and be blessed. Amen.